It was around my junior year of college, I kind of realized that NFL scouts were watching me snap in practice, and I was kind of like, wow, it's so weird. I, again, I still didn't even really realize that, like, you know, guys went to the NFL and just snap. What's up, Browns fans? Time now for another edition of Browns Working From Home, and you guys have loved our tour with the specialist, the Scottish Hammer, Austin Seibert. So we need to bring in the third musketeer, as it were, long snapper, Charlie Hewlett. Charlie, good to see you, man. How you doing? Doing great. How are you guys doing? We're doing very well. And I got to say, we've had a lot of fun talking with, with Jamie and with Austin. And, and they both say they just miss being around you, man. They miss the, the, the camaraderie, the frivolity, the, the jokes. And apparently, I've been told Austin Seibert's got a, a pretty uh, a sharp tongue there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. They, they've got full, uh, plenty of jokes. Uh, I definitely get a lot of old guy jokes, you know, those two being the, the rookies last year. Um, it was definitely a transition going from kind of being the, the middle brother to the older brother really quick. Um, you know, when once Britain kind of, uh, you know, moved to the Vikings and stuff like that, it, it, uh, it was a quick growing process for me last year. That's right. You are now the elder statesman in that room. And as you said, they remind you of that often. Now, what do you think of Austin's mullet that he is cultivating right now? I think that's a pretty, it's going to be a pretty strong look when he gets back here. It's a strong statement. It's a bold statement. I, I don't know if it's the right statement, but uh, especially, yeah, I don't know if you've seen it recently. I think a few days ago he bleached it. So um, it, no. it's an interesting look. It's an interesting look. You need to check out his Instagram. It's, he, uh, I don't know if he's going to keep it or not. It, it's it's a bold statement. Is say. he having like a quarantine crisis? What's going on? I think he's just bored. Yeah, I think he's just bored. He's got to be, right? Um, I don't know why else you, why, why else you do that, but uh, it's, it's, an, it's an interesting look, that's for sure. Indeed it is. How's this whole thing been for you? Obviously, you are a veteran. You've gone through normal off seasons, many of them. This obviously, unlike any other off season we've ever had with the coronavirus, no mini camps, no OTAs, none of it. No phase one, no phase two. What's that been like for you personally? Um, obviously different. Um, it's, you know, I haven't minded as much because I, I get to you know, spend some extra time with the family, spend some extra time with the kids, uh, which that part's been great. At the same time, I'm very much ready to get back to work. I'm ready to get back to normal, um, which will all happen in due time. Um, you know, it's it's definitely been interesting trying to mesh my schedule of the workouts and snapping and stuff that I've got to do on my own with my family's schedule. And it's been it's definitely been a challenge. Um, I think we've done an all right job of it and we're finally starting to get used to it. Um, you know, hopefully we can, like I said, get back to work here soon, though. Yeah. And who's your do you have like a group of snap catchers? I mean, how are you? Do you have a, a posse? How are you doing this? Because the hammer says you throw rockets out there. So I don't think anybody off the street can come handle your snaps. So I just got back to Cleveland. And actually, me and Jamie have been uh, working together this week. So we got back oh, to nice. Cleveland. So we, can, we can start getting uh, back to normal. Austin's going to join us here in a couple of weeks. Uh, so everything should be starting to get back to normal. Um, in the past, my wife has caught my snaps. But now with wow. two kids, uh, that, that's uh, no more. Um, I do have a friend when we were back in Tampa who was catching my snaps for me. And when that couldn't happen, I would kind of just – find a tree get a snap and I do have a snap in that but sometimes I'll snap into um, I kind of just you know do target practice and whatever I can find <laughs> and how many when you're going through something like that how many snaps a day do you like to go to is it more a feeling of when you get into the zone you're good or, or is it a certain number you like to hit whenever I'm first starting out so in like March um, you know late March early April I'm usually just trying to get you know, about 20 good quality snaps that I really like and they're right on target, um, you know, 20 punts and 20 field goals. And, you know, as we start getting like this time of year and we're starting to ramp up for camp, I try to hit, hit a little more volume just so, you know, kind of get the elbows used to used to the feeling and, and try to get the volume up just so, you know, I'm not getting, you know, people don't, it's kind of weird to say you get sore from snapping, but your elbows do get a little sore. So you kind of got to ramp the volume up a little bit. And, and this is the time of year, so. What's the key to a perfect snap? Oh gosh. Um, I mean, it's, it's very much mental. You just gotta, you kind of got to get the muscle memory down from just doing reps and reps and reps. And then for me, it's all just about focusing on the smallest little target I can find and trying to hit it. You know, what's unique about being a specialist is that you are one of 32. Austin's one of 32. Jamie's one of 32. So you guys really have that kind of bond, but I got to say long snap. When did you know, this is how I'm going to make a living. I'm going to be a long snapper. Oh, man. Um, you know, when I went to college, um, you know, I went there kind of as a tight end. I thought I was going to kind of, you know, be a backup long snapper. At the time, I didn't think 
you know, long snapping was something that you just did in college. Like I thought it was like a, a side job for a linebacker, a tight end or whatever. Um, so I kind of went to college with that mentality that it was just going to be something I did on the side. Um, now, whenever I became a starting long snapper, you know, they basically told me, you're not going to tight end meetings anymore. This is your only job. And that's kind of like, that's, that's weird. Like, why would I only do that? Um, but, you know, as time went on, I realized like you definitely for, for you to be as good at it as they want you to be, you've got to just devote the entire practice to it. And that's all you're doing. Um, so it was around my junior year of college. I kind of realized that NFL scouts were watching me snap in practice. And I was kind of like, wow, that's so weird. I, again, I still didn't even really realize that like, you know, guys went to the NFL and just snapped. Like I kind of just thought it was, you know, a side job for somebody else to do. And um, so it was like my junior year of college. I realized that there's a chance that, that could happen. When did you realize that you were gifted at it? Because obviously, as you said, you went to college to play tight end. So were you just every, did you mess around with it in high school from time to time? I and mean, when did you realize I'm actually pretty good at this? It, it was again about the same time, like my junior year. Um, you know, I, I started kind of realizing like I was, I was bigger than most snappers in college. Um, you know, I could kind of block, you know, a little bit better than them. I, my accuracy was very average in college. It was definitely something I improved upon um, once I got to the pro level. Um, but I always had kind of like the tools to be able to, to protect and cover, you know, decently and stuff like that. So um, it was about the same time. So things that I don't think people realize, it's not just about snapping a nice spiral and getting it back to them, you know, as quickly as you can and as accurately as you can. You really want the laces to be at a certain spot when the ball gets to the punter or the holder. How in the world do you work on that? Um, that's just a consistency thing. So that that's, you know, specifically for field goals, obviously on, on punts, there's just too much distance for you to yeah. figure that out. And there's really no need to. Um, but, you know, it's it's more just, once you're throwing the same snap over and over and over again, you can kind of figure out where you need to put your feet. And as long as you and the holder are in the same spot every single time, the laces should come out most of the time. As long as, as long as the snap's accurate, the rotation should be the same. The speed should be the same. Um, like I said, as long as I, you know, I know that I, I put my feet like two inches in front of the hash mark and the laces should come out. It's just trial and error over time. You figure it out. I mean, that's, I think I find that to be an incredible skill and I, you make it sound so simple. I know that it is not so simple. And, you know, when did you first, so you knew you were good at it, let's say junior year. That's when you realize, okay, maybe there's something I can do, but when did you first even long snap? When did you first do it? And, and was it a natural thing for, it? did your hands just work with it the right way that, because it's an odd kind of, somebody who's just throwing a football overhand, for example, as a quarterback, I know it's somewhat similar, but it's not similar at all either. Um, I guess that was like my junior year of high school. Um, I remember our snapper kind of graduated and our um, one of our coaches who's, whose job was to find the, the long snapper the next year. He was like, you got long arms. Let's uh, throw you in there and see, see if you can do it. And, and I was terrible at it, but I did all right. You know, I could get it there. But um, so, yeah, I started doing it in my junior year of high school, did it for two years. And um, next thing I knew, uh, I guess it was my size. I, I don't know. I don't know why college recruiters were asking me about it so much. I guess it it was just something that not a lot of people did that I, that I could do. I, I don't know. But um, I remember I was shocked when I was, you know, getting recruited out of uh, high school and so many, I mean, just about every recruiter was asking me about long snapping. So. Does that coach take a lot of credit for your success? The, the find the long snapper coach. I mean, that's a pretty specific role and he, he nailed an, uh, an NFL player. Uh, my head coach from high school, uh, coach Garcia, I still, I still keep in contact with him a lot. He mentions it from time to time. Um, he was a long snapper in college. So I think he does kind of like to toot his horn a little bit about it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, you know, he's got to have some of the credit, right? Absolutely. Yeah, no doubt. It was, it was a, his brainchild, you could say, to get yeah. you into this position. Now I want to go back. Cause you said you went to college as well with a little, some tight end aspirations. And for those of us who, you know, their football glory peaked with, let's say some big time flag football, it's often that the the snapper is going to go get out in some routes. Is there have we talked with Preef about any kind of a a trick play where you snap and then run a little a little slant out or something? Oh, Make I'm you eligible somehow? A, I'm begging him to throw a fake in there for me. You know, I, I've drawn some things up. I've shown it to him. He's just that doesn't really seem too receptive to it right now. I don't know why. Would, would you be eligible? Oh, we'd have to have a, a, a formation that specifically was for that route, but we could figure it out. There's ways. Okay, we could, right. There's ways to yeah. do this. There's ways to do this. How is Preef? How is Preef? He's an incredible coach. Honestly, he, he's one of the best special teams coordinators I've ever been around. Um, his attention to detail is awesome. Uh, the level of discipline that he demands is, is something that I really think, you know, we needed, especially, um, 
you know, coming from the, you know, as we've been building these years, we, we just definitely need that level of discipline and that level of detail. And um, that's something he brings. I mean, not only is he great at, you know, the schemes and the big picture things, but, you know, just the little details of where to put your hands and where to have your feet. He, he's just, the attention to that is, is I think really what makes him different. And I think he loves to be around you guys. So the zoom period is probably hard for coach brief. I think so. I think it is. I mean, he's honestly, he's been doing a great job of it. Um, you know, I, I was a little skeptical at first when I found out we were doing these Zoom meetings. I'm like, how are we going to like get anything done in these things? And I mean, it, it feels just like a regular meeting. It really does. I mean, he's got the, he's got the film up there on the screen and everything. And um, it feels like a regular meeting. Which is good, which is a good thing. And now you guys kind of are in your own world, but I think that also gives you a unique perspective on everything else that's going on because you guys really get to observe a lot of this stuff that maybe isn't directly related to, but you can see it. So I think you're somebody that'd be great to comment on what you've seen from head coach Kevin Stefanski, how this operation is being run. What do you think uh, from what you've seen from him? And and obviously, look, new head coach, first time head coach in the weirdest offseason ever for a billion different reasons. How's he been handling it all? I think he's 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 come off very polished. Um, he's clearly a great leader of men. Um, he can command a room even through a screen. Um, he's honestly, I think he's been exactly what we need. And um, you know, especially, I can't even imagine what it's like to be a first time head coach in this kind of off season. And I think he's handled it incredibly well. He he knows when to have fun. He knows when it's time to get down to business. And, and like I said, he's just very well polished. He runs the meeting very well. So you are, I'm sure, excited as well for this team to get together. There's a lot of talent when you look around those Zooms, and I'm sure you're looking at all these faces, a lot of talent on this team. And obviously, this year kind of under the radar, which probably is a good thing, but a lot of talent. This should be fun. You excited to get back here? Man, I'm I'm really excited. I can't wait to get back to work. Um, You know, like I said, I love being around my family and everything, but I'm I'm just ready to have a a normal routine day, as I'm sure a lot of people are. Um, I can't wait to get back in the building. Honestly, meet a lot of the new faces and yeah. a lot of the new people that you're talking about. I, I can't wait to just see how this team gels. And we're going to have to do it pretty quick. We're going to have to build the chemistry quick. But um, I definitely think it's it's something that, that we're all up to doing. And um, I really look forward to it. And we look forward to seeing you in Berea. I look forward to get back to Berea. I haven't gotten to get back to Berea either. It's going to be a, an exciting time later in the summer, hopefully, if everything goes the way that we hope that it does. I do want to ask, though, so I know you're doing your snapping and you know, you're in your playbook or whatever you need to do to be ready mentally as a long snapper as well with the guys. But what have you done for fun in this? I know you spent a lot of time with your family, which is great. But was there any any shows that really captivated you, Charlie, or anything you like to do? Uh, any hobbies you picked up? Um, probably the same answer for everybody. Me and my wife really got into that Michael Jordan documentary. Um, I definitely watched a couple episodes without her. So we kind of had to rewatch and she just got caught up on it actually last night. And um, that was the main show we really got into. Yeah. Honestly, these kids, have, <laughs> they've been tiring us out. So we've been going to bed pretty early. We haven't had too many shows. That was really the only one. The la- and it was great. The last answer was great. I question, I question if it was truly a documentary. I think there's some, maybe some, maybe a, some blurring, but was it entertaining? You're darn right. It was. Did I enjoy every second? I sure did. Incredibly entertaining. You know, now that you say that, you, you might have been right. Absolutely. Um, I'm going to think it's all true. I just, I want to think it. So. Um, but no, that, that, that's about all we did. I've been doing some yard work on top of that. That's about it. <laughs> Great. Well, listen, we're glad you're back in Cleveland. You and the hammer will be, we'll be listening for some, some pure snaps whistling through the air and then some bombs, some rockets off of his foot here. Uh, and those sweet sounds back in Cleveland. And Charlie, we appreciate you taking some time to talk with us here today and looking forward to, like I said, seriously, man, just getting to see you guys in Berea and uh, get this season going. Looking forward to it as well, man. I appreciate it. 